Wow, wow, wow. I know I'm about a day and a half late to this conversation, but obviously we have to talk about yesterday's brand new final pre-release trailer for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. This is the trailer I think I can confidently say most of us have been waiting for. And holy smokes, it more than delivered. It blew most of us away. It absolutely floored me. It gave me everything I already expected to see from this game and more. I cannot believe how incredible this trailer was and how amazing I know this game is going to be. What an interesting journey we have been on with this game, right? It was announced almost four years ago and for two, almost three years, I think it was basically referred to as the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild or Breath of the Wild 2. Of course, last year they finally told us that the game is called Tears of the Kingdom in I think it's third teaser slash trailer and they gave us the official release date of May 12th which is now less than one month away. Totally insane. We got another really great impressive new trailer a few weeks ago. Uh, actually probably about two months ago at this point in the Nintendo Direct. And then of course a 10 minute gameplay demonstration a week or two ago. And then of course yesterday the final big real trailer. This was the big mamma jamma. Almost more exciting than just seeing the gameplay if I'm being honest. And as I discussed in my sort of prediction video the other day when they announced the trailer was going to happen. I expected this to be very heavily focused on story context and story beats. And for the most part it was that on top of also showing us the insane grand scope of the world, of the gameplay, of the story, of the sky, and so many different things. I can't believe it. This trailer, trying not to just be a Zelda fanboy, which, let's be honest, I am a Zelda fanboy, it just, it blew me away. Now, this is really tricky because there is so much to dive into and so much to dissect and so much to theorize about and pick apart and watch frame by frame and all of these things. Obviously, as I watched it the first couple of times, I was putting together all sorts of theories in my head and I was picking apart this frame, this scene, this clip, this character. What does this mean? I have a ton of thoughts in my head, just like we all do, right? And uh, I think that in this video, this isn't really going to be focused as much on theorizing and speculating on what we saw. I mean, I'm probably going to touch on that here and there. I think that a lot of those kinds of conversations are better for different videos and theories and stuff down the road, right? Between now and the release of the game. For the most part, I just wanted to react to the general idea of the trailer, my impression of how high quality it is, and the fact that it really showed us that this game is going to be giving us exactly what we wanted it to be, what I always believed it would be, but of course, as we know, something that a lot of other folks were concerned that the game wouldn't be. How many times on this channel over the past couple of months have we had to talk about the fact that there is a bit of a divide, or at least before this trailer released, I should say, there has been a bit of a divide amongst a lot of fans, game fans and Zelda fans, right, on whether or not Tears of the Kingdom is going to be a true, worthy sequel to Breath of the Wild, if it's going to have enough content, if it's going to be too similar or samey to Breath of the Wild or not. Obviously, as we always bring up, tons of people have been claiming that this game feels like $70 DLC, while a lot of other folks have been saying, no, it's not going to be that. It is going to be a true sequel. You need to have patience. You need to just wait to see what the game is going to be and play it for yourself. Of course, the $70 price tag has been a huge part of that conversation. I've laid out in prior conversations my thoughts and the fact that I don't think this game should be $70 because I don't think that the Switch is the correct platform for Nintendo to make that price jump. But separate from that, do I think this game, in a world where PS5 and Series X games are selling for $70, do I think Tears of the Kingdom is going to justify a $70 price? In its own vacuum, yes, I do. So I personally have no problem with it, but I also understand other people who do. I don't love the decision by Nintendo, but I don't think it's going to be a ripoff given how high quality I expect the game to be. And so what are the big takeaways from this trailer, right? Well, like I said near the beginning, for me, the biggest takeaway is probably the story. And while it's not 100% spelling everything out, just like I said in my prediction video a couple of days ago, it gave us some of those cinematic moments and those narrative beats that lets us understand there is going to be a grand scale and a grand scope to the story 
of Tears of the Kingdom. We saw a lot of clips of Link. We saw a lot of clips of Zelda, which is incredibly important. We, as I also had predicted, we did get more voice acting. We also had it confirmed after the trailer that the kind of evil enemy sounding voice we heard in the prior trailer and in this new one is in fact Ganon. So Ganon will be voiced, and of course we're going to have to talk about Ganon's return in a minute. I'm kind of jumping ahead there. Uh, so we know, you know, we got voice acting in this trailer. We got some sort of good character, some protagonist, or someone who seems to be working with Zelda, or helping Zelda, or giving her direction on her journey to aid Link and what's going on there. I have no idea who that very tall person is. We did not see their face, but he was talking to Zelda. Zelda was talking in the trailer. And yes, we did get the voice acting for who we now know as Ganon. And, I mean, we saw some incredible stuff. We saw champions. I think some new champions as well as returning champions. And so it was nice to see them, hear some of their voices, understand the scope of a huge battle that is brewing with Link, with Zelda, with the champions, with kind of the kingdom, it feels like, of Hyrule, maybe battling against the return of Ganon and his evil dark forces. We know that's the general plight. Ganon is regaining his power, returning himself to his true form, He's going to be a bad guy and try to take over everything, and we have to basically fight and stop him. And so at this point, yeah, let's just keep talking about Ganon, because it's no longer Calamity Ganon. The true Ganon, Ganondorf himself, is returning in this game. And this is a huge deal, because Calamity Ganon was like fine as a random, nameless, faceless kind of negative entity that became just a big kind of monster in the final boss fight. And it was cool, and it was great, and Breath of the Wild, I think, was very brilliantly designed around not needing, like, a character to be the protagonist or the main enemy. It was just the idea of an evil force, and then just a big monster at the end. And I think for that game, it was fine, because the world and the gameplay was the real star of the show, and it was incredible. But now, for the first time in, what, 17 years, I think it is, since Twilight Princess in 2006, we have actual Ganondorf coming back. And as many people have pointed out, Link, Zelda, and Ganon finally starring together in a mainline console entry, a new game, first time since Twilight Princess. It's a huge deal. And if you think about it, it's, it's really pretty wild when you put the pieces together and you realize since Twilight Princess in 2006, the last time all three of these characters were together in a game, there's only been two mainline console releases, which is Skyward Sword in 2011 and Breath of the Wild in 2017. Tons of other spin-offs and re-releases and ports and remakes and stuff of games throughout the years, of course. We've had a lot of Zelda games to play, but as far as mainline console entries, it's only been those two games until, until Tears of the Kingdom, which is really crazy. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this in this video other than to say, yes, I did notice what I think could potentially maybe, 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 okay, please pay attention to the keyword here, maybe, have seen Demise, right? I mean, that behind the back, behind the headshot of the long flowing hair of Ganon, or of some character, I should say, very much looks reminiscent of Demise, and we know Demise was the first main antagonist in Skyward Sword, earliest in the timeline. He says, I'll return, my descendants will come after you. Obviously, he eventually becomes Ganon in this whole kind of thing, and as I've said before, I know the Zelda lore, but I'm not a super duper Wikipedia expert. And so I get a little confused on that, but we know Demise was basically the genesis of what would become Ganon, you know, the resurrected versions of Ganon and whatnot. And so it's feasible to think that Demise in some way, shape, or form could play a role in this game. Breath of the Wild and Skyward Sword obviously already had a bit of a story connection anyway. And this game is introducing another sky element, just like I broke down in a video a couple of weeks ago. There's a lot of connections. Now, of course, that figure with the long hair also could just be Ganon on his way to regaining his true form, right? Because we've seen versions of Ganon like in Hyrule Warriors where he also has long hair. So there's a whole lot of things going on there. I plan on making a different video, maybe going deeper into that idea. But it's worth noting that one of the antagonistic enemy characters we see without knowing who they are specifically does kind of look like Demise. And so maybe there's a Demise and Ganondorf thing going on in this game, but then we of course see true Ganon, 
his face. He looks incredible. We have the real bad guy back in Tears of the Kingdom. This is a massive deal and I cannot wait. And then of course the gameplay. Holy freaking cow. They showed so much in terms of gameplay. More things I plan on breaking down in future videos. But we got hints at some major puzzles. Whether they're shrines or dungeons or temples. Something traditional. Something new. Something in between. We don't know, but they did seem pretty complex, right? Some of the stuff we saw in terms of puzzle solving and whatnot seem a lot more complicated than just the typical shrines we saw in Breath of the Wild, which is what I really hope we're going to get, right? We even saw glimpses at what I think might be dungeons or temples kind of raising out of the ground. That those kind of like... I don't even know how to describe the shape, but there's a specific structure we've seen in prior trailers that they focused heavily on in this one. And these things that kind of jut out of the ground in like a specific sort of way where they kind of get bigger as they come up higher from the ground. I mean, I think that we might be looking at what dungeons or temples or the puzzle solving is in this game. And I think... I don't know if these are also on the ground and also in the sky or just in one or the other. I believe we've seen images of them in the sky prior, so maybe they are only in the sky. Uh, tough to say. I can't tell. Maybe other people have confirmed it. Maybe we just don't know until we play the game. But it's very cool, and we saw glimpses of crazy new powers. One of the main ones that jumped out to me was this gauntlet power that's obviously enveloping Link's right arm. He's like holding a rocket that's like shooting him up really high into the sky. And so I think that's going to help for all sorts of traversal, whether you're on Hyrule, you're going up to the sky or whatever, is a way to fly using a power on Link's arm, right? So, and that kind of feeds into, I kind of skipped over the fact that the tears seem to be actual items, right? Something that maybe gives different powers. I think there's a lot of different tiers, these little kind of tear-shaped crystals. Zelda is holding one at the very end of the trailer. And I think some people have kind of pointed out that we've seen glimpses of other ones throughout this trailer as well. I haven't looked at them all. Almost like Infinity Stones or something, which is kind of funny. So the Tears of the Kingdom seem to be basically like items in this game that probably will grant different powers and they probably have to be collected to have the ultimate energy to stop Ganon. Just kind of guessing, but that's probably what's happening. Is it super original if that's the direction they're going? No. Do I care? Definitely not, because the game looks so good otherwise. We also saw this amazing shot that everyone is focused on where there's like these floating balls of water and Link is able to jump into one and like float, probably swim to the other side and maybe start to do some weird Mario Galaxy stuff. It just looks so cool and so epic. It also seems like there might be kind of like traditional bosses back, right? There's this weird flying fish looking thing that I don't even know how you would describe it, but that looks pretty cool. We've seen the three-headed dragon, kind of like a hy hydra, uh, some other things featured in this trailer. So maybe classic dungeons, maybe classic boss battles, maybe some of these things are part of this game on top of a very epic story. And we saw so much of the sky, you guys... The sky is a big deal. And they've also shown a lot more of what seems to be these like Zonai robot characters kind of almost living out their own life on the islands. And so the big theory I, I'm putting together here in, in my brain is that maybe the sky and all these floating islands represent elements of the Zonai's past. Or maybe it's the Zonai's old land that for whatever reason gets re reawakened or brought back to Hyrule. And it's floating in the sky, and maybe the Zonai's Sky Islands from centuries past also relates to Skyward Sword as the first game in this timeline, and the fact that there was a whole society of people living in the sky back then, and maybe the Zonai are connected in that space, right? I mean, there's a lot to connect, and a lot of it needs to be brought up in other videos, of course. You know, I don't want to spend too much more time on this conversation, but... I just, I just can't believe it. The epic scale and breadth of this trailer just floored me. And so I think it's safe to say that hopefully this is the trailer that silenced a lot of the naysayers or the people who are worried or concerned about this game. If you thought it was $70 DLC, if you thought it was going to be identical to Breath of the Wild, if you thought that there wasn't going to be a large scope to this game. I personally think, and I think most people feel the same, that all of that stuff was shut down with this trailer. And reminder, I was never really concerned. Sure, I wanted to see more, but I always believed, like, Nintendo's not going to mess this game up. They haven't been spending six years doing nothing. That's been my general philosophy through all of these mysterious trailers and the four years of wondering about this game. I always kind of believed in it. 
And the gameplay demonstration a couple of weeks ago, and now this final trailer, really sealed the deal for me that how I always felt this game would play out is what happened. This game is going to be amazing. And like I said, for me, worth the $70. If you feel differently, that's fine. I'm not here to shame anyone who has strong opinions on the pricing, because it is a very weird, complicated scenario that I wish wasn't happening the way that it is. And so, yeah, I can't wait. I just can't wait to play in the sky, you guys. I'm so excited for that. I haven't been this excited for a game since Metroid Dread was releasing, if I'm being honest. Resident Evil 4 Remake, huge one, and, and I just finally completed that a couple of days ago. Phenomenal. One of my favorite games of all time. You know, in Metroid Prime Remastered, because that was like a shadow drop, it's hard to say I was anticipating that game, right? Although it was the greatest thing pretty much ever. So, as far as new games that we knew about before release, I mean, Metroid Dread... Resident Evil 4 Remake, even though I played the original many times. And then, of course, Tears of the Kingdom. I'm so hyped. I'm taking a week off of work for when this thing launches. And uh, I can't wait. This was the trailer we needed. To me, this changed everything we knew about this game and everything we could expect from this game. That's how I felt. Hopefully, you guys feel the same. Less than a month to go. And so, that's about it.